Let me ask y'all this question though. What's wrong with a man getting an egg? It's the, I mean, it's that's the, his it's the, it's the, No, 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 look. <laughs> If that's what he wanted to do, y'all should have been saying? recording this right now. Yeah, we recording. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, we recording. This, this, this is what I said. You get your ass ate. Yeah. Okay. This is my thing. But see, my, I, I, my, I, girl, I, see, my girl ain't going to do that, but I've had my ass ate before. Okay, what position you get in to do that? Threes. I was in the threes when I got mine. Now, oh, he's, saying if you, oh, oh. he's saying if you sniper rifle. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, you can't. As a man, you can't bend over and then throw your leg back. Yeah, now, yeah. you can't do nothing like that. Right. But if you get you getting topped off, and then she she grab she go put her leg her yeah. arms up under your leg lift yeah, you up yeah, yeah, yeah. and she gonna lift you up a little bit yeah. and then she gonna handle her business but <laughs> I had my. Man, can I be real, man? We are back with another episode, another amazing show, man. Can I be real? A break from the bullshit. Well, we give you a nice break from all the lies, the fabrication, the bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Everybody trying to sweet talk you, all that kind of good stuff. We ain't doing none of that here. We getting straight down to the business. As always, I got my partner, my co-host with me, my brother. Dion the Motivator. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, yeah. I'm King yeah. the Legendary. We got another one today, man. We got my dog with me. Burr, burr, burr. You know what I'm saying? We got the, we got, <laughs> we got the man, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, hey, yeah, the, yeah, the song yeah. went, uh, Kevin Gates came with a song, I don't get tired. Uh, yeah. yeah. I got six jobs. I don't get. That's mm -hmm. my dog right here, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah Not yeah, Kevin yeah. Gates, but he got six jobs, though. For sure. For he sure. Got six for jobs, sure. though, for yeah, sure. Yeah. But before we get, we got some sponsors. We do got some, man. You know, man. As always, man, this episode has been sponsored by Love Deposit Studios, man. If you need any content, man, anything shot, come on down to Love Deposit Studios, man. If you need a photo shoot, if you need a podcast shot, if you want to do a music video, music performance, anything you need content-wise, man, come on down to Love Deposit Studios where you can withdraw a little hate and deposit some love. Leave a deposit down below. Real smooth, too. I like how you did it. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah, That's yeah. You got to take that, that out of here. So you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Just, you, say you, know, you know, you know. You got to yeah. look out sometimes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, yeah. real, real, you, did real. Did you see it? What's that? Yeah, 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 yeah. What you do? What you do? I got it though. I got it though. I got. We we talk about. Now when look, he had a little string hanging from his shoe. Hey, and then yeah, bro, you a broomstick piece. So when you jump your foot, like you know, see what I'm saying? Hey, that only happened at the studio. It love the pots, man. You know what I'm saying? We that's love. You know what I mean? Looking out for love for sure. Only love the pots studio. They ain't doing that nowhere else. They gonna sit there and get you have a string on your shoe, bro. Can I be real? Can I be real? That's real. But um. We got another sponsor, as always, man. Order My Steps 5 on Instagram. If you're looking for any Bow. kicks for your feet, you Bow. know what I'm saying? You're just walking in the wrong direction. It, it's finna get fall time season. Mm -hmm. That's when you probably get cuddled up with, mm -hmm. you know, with your little something, something like that. And a lot of y'all not going to make that make that line up because y'all shoes not together. Mm -hmm. So if you order My Steps 5 on Instagram and get your steps put together properly, you may be able to be snuggled up and cuddled up mm. for the fall and spooky season. Get what, my boy? <laughs> <laughs> hey, boy, it's going to be a cold fall, cold winter. You know what I'm saying? If you sure. by yourself, I ain't playing. But so gonna be cold if you by yourself. It's gonna be cold if you by yourself. Yeah, for sure, for you know sure. You get sure. your big girl, you might be all right because she gonna feed you and she gonna keep you warm throughout mm -hmm. the night. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm get you, get you a nice little old Pillsbury, and, and now you gotta drop off around springtime because <laughs> the sun's starting to come out. It's gonna start getting hot, but she's gonna keep you fed through the fall and the winter. Mm. Unless she go to DR and she get that surge, then mm -hmm. what? she go DR. Yeah. Then so, she outside. Yeah. Yeah. Then, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. then this week, we have to strangle her. Because now she get yeah. outside her, her rain. You got to catch her. Say, <laughs> say come back in. Back. Bring her back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. We got, man. We can't forget them. Yeah. We can't forget them. Y'all already know what we say, man. Mine almost gone, man. But. High biscuits, fresh from Calio's Tacos, man. We say it every week, man. If it ain't Calio's Tacos, we don't oh, want it, man. We don't want it, man. Hey, Calio's came and blessed us today with some good old high biscuits juice, man. This juice is so good. It's good. It's good for your skin. I ain't gonna lie to good you. for your for your bowels. Yeah. It's just good, man. Like y'all, I swear to God, they're good. <laughs> <laughs> See what I'm saying? You need to say it is in the store. See, hey, y'all, y'all heard Calio's. it here first, man. Calio's. I'm you, Walmart, I Target. I ain't, I ain't bullshitting. My credit was like at a 400. I had poured this on my phone, on my Experian app. 7.30. Yeah. <laughs> 7.30. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Is that good, bro? Is that good? Is that good? 
Hey man, but let's get right into it, man. You know what I'm saying? We got we got a special one on the day, man. You know what I'm saying? Y'all see him draped up, dripped out. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you probably the freshest guest we done had on the I ain't gonna say probably. You the freshest guest we done had on the show, man. You know what I'm saying? Hey, what I do, I got a dread like this. Nah, facts, 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 man. Hey, hey, man, we got the entrepreneur here, you know what I'm saying? The boss, man. Not one job, not two jobs, not three jobs. Man, he got the jobs for the jobs. He got the pay for the pay. Hey, he here to stay, man. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 clothing man. owner. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Hey, we're going we gonna to get into all that, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Welcome to the show, my boy. Man, appreciate yeah. y'all. Yes, appreciate yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I ain't going to lie. When I, <clears throat> first, huh? Let him introduce himself. I want to hear how he introduced himself. Are we talking how you introduce himself? Yeah. Who are you? Uh, man. DeVars Bell. Uh, country boy from Mississippi. Man, like they said, I got multiple jobs. Ex criminal, ex basketball player. Man, I don't know, man. I don't know where to start. It's man, so much, yeah. man. It's so, it's, so many, it's so many different layers, man. I was gonna call him. I was gonna call him for the game, but he, he was at work for the game for the tournament. Oh, we oh, had the game. tournament. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I would have. Yeah. I would have played, but I had. I had. Uh, I'm a finance manager at a car dealership. I'm a realtor. I own a clothing company, and I own a catfish farm. And then I do investment property myself. So, that's what's up. Yeah. That's what's up. Hey, that, I need to holler about that catfish for them. That's all. Yeah. That's one of my passions, man. Since man. I was little, man. I'm man. from Alabama, so yeah, that my folks been, like, yeah, yeah, been doing know. it for years. Yeah, 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 yeah. When I say year, years on top of year, but we just breed and sell. Yep. That's so what I you need do. your you need your pond filled up. We come fill your pond mm, up. Yeah, that's the league. Yeah, 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 cut out the middle, man. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah for sure, I'm for sure. We pun now. Nah, for real. It's, it's money, money man, for real. It's money. That's, gener that's generational. Like, yeah. that's you can pull a catfish on your pun, sell at a uh, flea market or like a farmer's market. Mm -hmm. You can turn around and people who, like, getting pools in they, in they area, mm -hmm. their neighborhood, community, you can go fill their pool up. Man, there's so many different ways you can do it. It's some money in it, man, I'm telling you. My granddad have been doing it, man, since... I'm 35, so my granddad been doing way before I was born. So, mm. Mm. Well, he, I've never he heard got of it. it. Yeah. yeah. So you know how he started off in it? Uh, man, just uh, oh, the story with my grandfather is my granddad had learned from a white man. Like he met a white man in this round of time during like just say like the desegregation and all that. And my grand, a white man named Gary Barwell, he just laced my granddad with game about how to become rich. Because my granddaddy used to work at Mississippi State as a custodian. And so he told him to just buy some land. When you buy land, dig, you know, dig pools. Fill the pool up with water and then get these little, um, I can't think of the name for the baby catfish, but you put them in there. When you put them in there, you feed them crickets, organic crickets. And then they're going to grow. They're going to breed. And then now, once your, once your pool fill up, you turn around and get another pool and transfer them to the next pool. And then you do the same thing, the same cycle over and over and over and over and over again. But my granddaddy came up because this white man told him how to buy property and not sell it, lease it. You never want to sell land, you want to lease the land. And then he ended up leasing land in Mississippi State. Mississippi State built on the land. He get a check from that. As long as that property is on his land, he going to get a check from it. Yeah. Uh, Mailbox money. Yeah, oh. now nah, for real. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, that's for real, real for real. Game. That's real game. So, real, so if, you, if you're from the country and you know folks in a country town, and it, it's going to sound bad when I say this, you want to turn around and try to buy land from them. Because you never, like just say right now, a recession finna hit. So if you got some money on you, you want to turn around. You, How the rich get rich, they take advantage of people who need help. And But it sound bad. But game, that's how it is. Yeah, so if somebody foreclosing on their house, you turn around. Hey, I don't want you to. I don't want this to show up on your credit. So what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna buy this from you. I'm gonna pay this. I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna take it over. So you take this money that I give you, or take this opportunity, and you go get your apartment, stay in this apartment, get your affairs together, and then you turn around, and go buy your house later on. But I need that right now, and I'm gonna give you this. I'm gonna do this to get you out your situation. And it, and like I say, morally it's bad, but. Name of the game. It's part of, it's, it's part of how she does. Yep. Mm. Uh, uh, well, that real game right there. Nah, for friend. sure. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah, man. Hey, but that's why we got him here, man. Nah, that's sure, why we got sure, him here, man. Sure. So 
So going back to to your to your start, bro. <clears throat> I know me and you, we did an interview. Well, how long ago was that? I think last year. Last year? I think last year. Seen last year, two years? Two, probably about two years ago. I don't I seem like it that long. It probably was last year. Not last year. I don't remember. <laughs> it was, it's been it's been a little minute though. Yeah. But your story, man, was was crazy then. And so just the the man that you've become now from just a year. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So what's been your transition from then to now? Within a year. We'll just say a year. Man, I'm just I'm just trying to reset from what I I told you when we did the interview. I did eight years in the penitentiary. For weed, and I got to get them eight years back. Mm. So them eight years when I was laying on that rack, not doing them, I need to turn around and make them like be super productive. Yeah. And sh I've been home since what 2017. Mm. Still got some ways some to go. Ways, yeah, for sure. Do you, you feel know like that? you would be, you would be where you at without that? Because even with that, like nah. your story, your story in there is, is like. Like you were saying, you sold in there, yeah. start the clothing business in there. Yeah. So it's like without that time, no, like what nah. you? Nah. Even prison was the big thing to help me, and it's crazy to say, but it made me who I am because yeah. I was in there, I had time to focus. If if I never went to prison, I still be selling dope right now. I still be chasing women. I still just be gang bang. I still be on a lot of fuck shit. If I if I never went to the pen, <clears throat> so like that. It really, I say this all the time and sound crazy. I feel like people need to go through something in order to be some. You got to. I feel like the youngster that going to jail, I don't champion it, but I know what prison can do for you if you take advantage of it. Yeah. Like, there's no rehabilitation in the penitentiary unless you're trying to rehab. If you're trying, you gonna get you gonna get what you need out of it. If not, shit, you gonna be like I was when I went in the first. First day, I told him, I like, look, I'm gonna be the toughest BD on the compound. I'm finna, you know, get into it with these vylaws. I'm finna bang with these bloods. I'm finna do this. I'm finna do this. I'm finna do this. And then I bumped into a vylaw who said, "Man, look, we don't do that. We don't do that." He said, "I can tell you more about your organization than you know." He was like, "I'm not the opposition." He was like, "How this, how this started? This vylaw, this BD, the GD, the crew, the blood stuff. How it started." It's not what you think how it started. Mm -hmm. And man, that man sat me down and laced me up. He changed my life. Frederick Showers, they call him Big Poker. He was a five star university elite for the bylaws. Changed my life. He was like, man, look, we ain't doing that in him. We ain't gang bang. <clears throat> we ain't doing none of that in him. We all get money. If we go bang with somebody, it go be with the Aryans in here. Yeah, right That's it. Side. We go bang with them, but we not banging with each other in here. And then he told me, he told, I learned more about BDs than. I ever learned from BDs. I learned it from a vice lord. It's crazy. Crazy. Changed my life. Dang. So, you know, I hear you talk about, you know, your time in prison, right? And I know you, like, you talked about the youth. And, you know, a lot of youth these days, they, they are acting reckless. You know what I'm saying? And when they get locked up, they still, like, it make them, they come out better criminals. You know what I mean? Yeah. Outside of that conversation with, uh, with the guy that, you know, sat you down and talks to you, what was, like, your... Your moments, because you know, we had them moments where it's like we have an epiphany. We have mm -hmm. them paradigm shifts, like them cannot be real moments, right? Yeah. What was that cannot be real moment for you? Because you know, he can, we can have a conversation and we listening, but it takes time to get to that for point. So we had for it to actually yeah, register. Yeah, like, sure. what was that moment for you? It was like, man, this is the time where I got to sit here. I got to be real with myself. I got to sit with all my thoughts, like, and I'm finna change my life. Like, was it a specific moment or a specific incident that happened that, that made you do that in prison or just over time, just gradually? <clears throat> so, I never forget that day. And this is what changed my life. So, when I, when, I got in the, when I came into prison in Mississippi Department of Correction, when you first come into the, the system, you're going to go to Rankin County. Rankin mm -hmm. County is like central booking. It, like, like, not central booking. It's processing for the penitentiary. Mm -hmm. So once you get there, they're going to send you to a place called Quick Bed. Once you go to Quick Bed, that's when they're trying to decide where you're going to go. You're going to go, you're going to go to North Mississippi, you're going to go to South Mississippi, or you're going to stay in Central Mississippi. Central Mississippi is Rankin County. South Mississippi is Green County. That's the third, that's the third worst prison system in the United States of America. Um, if you go to North Mississippi, you go into Parchment. So when you go to Quick Bed, when I got into Quick Bed, like I told you, I went in trying to bang because I thought that 
you know, the vice lord was my opposition. I thought the GDs, based on like what's going on in Chicago, I thought they was my oppositions. Mm -hmm. I thought, you know, GDs were gonna try to put me in a situation where I gotta be, you know, up under them, you know, all that type mm -hmm. of stuff. So it was just like a bunch of false information from guys who came from the penitentiary or what you see on TV, movies and stuff like that. So I got the quick bed, got into a bang, and that's why I got all these scars on my face, got the bang with the vice lords. I ended up going to the hole. When I went in the hole, my daughter was born. My baby mama told me, because I, check this out, a vice lord gave me the phone for me to call <laughs> home to my folks. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. crazy. And, it, and that's why I say all the time, it's like, we got to stop looking at people as opposition unless they really trying to do harm to you. If they ain't doing no harm to you, get that dumb shit out your head. Mm -hmm. Because it was, like I say, it was a vice lord who, who laced me up while I was in the penitentiary. It was a vice lord who gave me a phone and said, hey, call your folks, let them know that you all right and that you in here. So first person, first person I called was my oldest daughter, mama. Called her, talked to her, everything good with the baby, the baby born, everything good. She on the phone crying because she was left in the hospital by herself when nobody there to support her. Mm -hmm. You know, all the families get to look at their baby, you know, their families, yep. she ain't had that. So after I got off the phone with her, I turned around and called my brother Breland, BJ. I called him. He was like, man, I know you in there going crazy right now. Your cousin just got drafted number 46 to the NBA. My cousin Latavius Williams is the first high school player to go to the D-League straight out of high school when they stopped players going to the NBA. So a lot of people like to speak about Brandon Jennings, Emmanuel Moody. My cousin mm -hmm. was the first before all of them. Look it up. It's documented. Yeah. And when he got drafted to the NBA and my daughter was born, I just woke up. It was just like, bro, I ain't, I can't do this. This ain't, this ain't where I need to be at. Yeah. And they ended up, um, I sa I stayed in the hole about three months. I almost lost my mind in the hole. When they took me out the hole, and I ended up going to to um, to Green County, that's when everything started like waking up, waking up in me. Mm -hmm. You know, what I'm saying I started getting around a lot of like old school guys who just like. Man, I used to read. I used to read about you in the newspaper. Man, I used to this. Oh man, you don't supposed to be here. Man, you the only one got green and white pants on inside this fence. Everybody in here got black and white pants or red and white pants. These are killers in here. You in here for a weed. So it's like little stuff like that. Like man, I don't supposed to be here. And I just start waking up, man. I just start sitting down, reading, working out, learning. My rap partner had nine natural life sentences, and he used to wake up and he's just. He used to just tell me, he was like, Slim, you just passing through. He used to say the every morning. Mm -hmm. And, and for, for a minute, I'm like, man, what the hell are you talking about passing through? He was like, man, you going to get out of this. You going to be all right. You going to do he, he was. I ain't know nothing about affirmation, but he used to give me the game every morning. Like, man, you going to be all right. Man, you going you go to get out. You going to take over the world. You go, just stuff like that. And mm -hmm. I be like, man, you crazy, you. white boy. Yeah. What you talking about? Mm -hmm. But the whole boy? time, white boy, he had nine natural life sentences. And I never knew what a natural life sentence was until I met him. To where he said, like, if I died today and woke up, I got to go back to jail and do another life sentence. As a baby, tell you, hey, man, get your so little ass on there. So, like, a, so <laughs> like they said, Cat got nine lives. So, so then they got to get, he get killed and come back. He got to go to jail again. Die, go to jail again. God. Nine Damn, times. Boy, what'd he do? Right. You, you know, in the penitentiary, you never talk about you never talk about like your charge, like talking about you don't want you don't well, want to get into. How do they find out the how they find out the folk charges? Do they just be running their mouth type shit. Yeah, oh, and then plus you you man in the penitentiary, I had an iPhone in the pen, so you got to do them go to the MDOC website and mm, type in a person on MDOC yeah. number, and it tell you everything. Man. But a lot of people that had access to phones in there, you know what I'm saying? So they just going through the motion. Some people just they give a damn. I don't care what you're here for. You long as you ain't in this organization and you ain't molest no kids or rape no woman, man, I don't care what you're in for. Nine yeah, times yeah. ten, if you did something like that, they go find out anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. You know, I heard you say uh, you almost lost your mind in the hole, and it's crazy because I was watching a podcast last week, and it was two guys on there that were, you know, being, being locked up, mm -hmm. and they was talking about, like, how you can tell how guys done been in the hole, how they get out. Out of the hole, they talking to themselves, they mm -hmm. they seeing stuff, you know what I'm saying? They having illusions, like they just really 
lose and they don't know that they losing it but yeah. everybody around them know, like during that moment did you like know that you were losing your nah. mind or did somebody have to bring you back and be like hey bro snap snap out of it man to be honest i say it all the time i don't know what would have happened if i had to stay in another day or another week to yeah. be honest but i know i was losing my mind like i i know i was losing my mind i just started tripping and then you started like daydreaming about like random shit. like you find yourself like zoning out like you could just be sitting here, and then somebody could be talking to you, and you hear nothing they saying, and then you start talking to yourself because you think you talking to them. That all gonna happen to me. Yeah, real talk, yeah, real yeah. talk, because you just in this little, the whole man. I'm telling you, it's literally a twin size bed, but it's attached to the wall, and you have a toilet with a with a, with a, with the um, the sink at the top of it, and that's it. That's it, like. I'm six seven. If I spread if I spread my hands out, I still have room, like for one wall to the next. I have to like fold some of my arm up. That's how small it is. Like small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. Yep. Damn. Man, listen, can I be real, man? Like I ain't never been well, I done been to jail one time. You been jail? Yeah. Well, I done been to little lockdown, like little eight hour, you know what I'm saying, ticket oh, stuff. Drunk. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. They they had pulled me up on some tickets, but I ain't lying. So when they had me in there and um they was like, How you finna go see the judge? So, you know, now they do the little digital stuff where you go in there mm -hmm. and see the judge. So I'm like, bet I'm about to get out. The lady come back there. I was at DeSoto and she was like, uh, come with me. So I'm like, I'm thinking I'm about to get out. She take me in a little cell. And bro, I was in that mud for like eight hours, but I almost lost my freaking mind though, bro. I'm in that mud tripping, like what the heck? Like yeah. what what you know what I'm saying? I'm 35 yeah. at the time. I'm just going through so in my mind, it's like, dang, bro, like for somebody to have to do this, man. If you and I don't want to just harp on this story, but if you could just talk about just that that feeling that you had, like that when you sitting in that room, when you get up, you done been in there 90 days, 60 days. Nobody around, no, you know, real com communication with people. Like, what's that feeling? And then, how do you overcome to push yourself to the next day to be like, damn, man, I could literally <clears throat> just give up right now. You know what I mean? Because I ain't, because I, not to cut y'all, but the reason why I do it, because like when I used to work there, I just seen a lot of people commit suicide from being yeah. in jail. They did jail. They ain't even pinch. They did jail. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of people that go in there and they kill themselves. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like they can't take like that, that isolation, bro. Yeah. It's pressure. It's like a different. You know what I'm saying? Because you a mind fuck yourself to check out. I just couldn't. Like, I just couldn't, man. Like I say, my cousin going to the NBA, my daughter being born, my first kid, like I just wanted to just – and I want to go and do this time so I can hurry up and come home. Yeah. And when I went into the penitentiary, it was a question mark on top of my sentence. They gave me 20 years, 15 to certified on papers. Mm -hmm. So when I went into the penitentiary, I was under the impression I was supposed to do 85% because that's how they had me in the system, 85%. Mm -hmm. So, shit, and then come to find out, like, I went 85%, I was 25%, but I ended up doing way more time than I supposed to because yeah. I didn't know – how to go to the case manager and do this and do this. But I didn't check out. I didn't give up because, like I say, when I finally had access to a phone and I'm communicating with my people in the free world, mm -hmm. you got something to live for. They sending you pictures. They sending you letters. Like, man, nah, nah I can't. I'm finna do this time. I'm finna go home. And before you know it, shit, boy, you ain't, this calendar, this calendar, this mm -hmm. calendar. Like, when you start checking out calendars, that shit kind of like, damn. Then you get used to it be like, Whenever they open the door, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. And I, I just have a plan when I get out because I ain't no bumping to a guy named Alfonso Hayden. Boom, no vice lord. Alfonso Hayden, he was like, he was a black dude, man. He was from Columbus, Mississippi. So he was up from where I'm from in the GTA. Mm -hmm. Man, this man was buying shit from China, shipping it to Columbus, Mississippi. His daughter was sitting like iPods, like all type of Apple, like watches. Well, it wasn't Apple Watch at the time. It was like them little Android mm -hmm. watches. He was getting that, selling them in the town. Then he was getting them and selling them in the pen, making money. Yeah. He was buying property in the penitentiary. The Black Enterprise Magazine, he was getting them in, the, he was getting them, like bringing them in. And he used to just sit down and read them. And he'd bring, like, Slam, come, come read this. Like, 
and I just start reading Black Enterprise Magazine, Wall Street Journal, mm -hmm. Clarion Legend. So as you start reading this stuff, you start getting knowledge. You start learning stuff like you know, about different stuff. Frederick Shaw was big poking. He was a walking almanac. I never knew what the fuck a almanac was. Mm -hmm. And man, you, you can ask him anything, man. He knew it. Man, who was on the 2003 team when Carmelo Anthony won um, the national championship with Syracuse? That man could tell you who they play, who was the best player on the team, how many points they scored, everything. That's how smart he was. Mm -hmm. And I just be like, man, I want to be like that. So to answer your question, when you start being around folks who pouring into you, who want to see you grow, it make you, it give you that confidence. You be like, man, I can't give up because now I'm gonna let this person out. I'm gonna let this person out. I'm gonna let this person out. And like I say, my first kid, me not being there, yeah. I gotta be there. So, so that leads me, man, because you know, well, really, what happened is they have taken all our OGs. You know what I mean? All of the men. You know what I mean? And taken them and locked them up. Yep. You know what I mean? They, they in the systems, right? Yep. So I'm interested because what I'm hearing is a lot of mentorship down there. I'm hearing that you had to go. Down there to get the 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 support from from other men, you know what I mean? That that was snatched from the community. You know right. what I'm saying? That that's where you were really getting your identity as a young man. So, but that leads me to add you to the beginning. You know, you talk about your grandfather, or and you talk about being a father. You know, behind bars. What was your relationship like with your father coming up? I ain't had now. Um, only male figures I saw in my life was my uncles and my granddaddy. You know what I'm saying? My daddy, my daddy got 19, 20 kids. So how can he be a father? It's just like the Nick Cannon thing. And it's always a constant question about Nick Cannon got 12 kids. How can you father 12 kids? And I don't care how much money you got, what you got going on. You cannot father 12 kids. I got three girls. All my kids stay in different states. I do my best to try to be a father over the phone, but luckily I've been there for them since day one and I try to prioritize even just talking to them. But with my dad, he was just too busy chasing women. You know, he was too busy trying to get his shit together. So he didn't have time to like come play basketball, come play football. I just saw him eight nine and then. And he went there supporting me financially because shit, my mama did all type of fuck shit to provide for me and my brother. And then me watching my community around me, shit, I wanted to hustle. Shit, me and my brother weren't going to school, hungry and shit like that. So I started breaking in four houses, stealing out a car, selling dope. I, how I got in the dope game, I started selling fake crack. So, and that was just to get food. When I learned how to make a whole cookie out of fake crack, ah, shit, I'm finna go get them Jabos. I'm finna go get them feel At the time, it was lie. I'm finna go get that. Because I don't want to go to school looking regular. And plus, my little brother, shit, we've been in the house two, three days. My mom ain't been home. Shit, I got to feed my brother. So for me, I ain't had no father figure. I just watched, I just paid attention to what was around me. And I used to long, I used to like beg for that type of like affection from a man. That's how I started, you know, gang banging. Because the niggas who, the niggas who was cool in my hood, they were dope dealers and they were BDs or they were GDs. So, shit, I want to be like them niggas. Mm -hmm. So that's how I started hustling. That's how I started being in the streets. And then when my grand when my granddaddy ended up getting in my life, my granddaddy taught me hard work. That's why I had the multiple jobs. That's why I work so hard. That's why mm -hmm. I don't have time, like a bunch of free time. Because shit, I saw my we used to get up. When I stayed with my granddad, we used to get up early in the morning, right before school, go to the hayfield, rake hay, bale hay. When we leave there, we come home, go eat at my big mama house, and then we going to school. Summertime, I don't know nothing about no Six Flag and amusement parks and stuff like that yeah. because, shit, we were working. So that's why I still have that in me now because I never want nothing to be taken from me. And that's what my granddad used to say. He was like, shit, they can't take that from me. I own it. I own my house. I own the. He like no matter what you think about these piece of shit cars out here. I own it. I own. It. I own it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nah, and so I'm like that too. Like yeah. you, these folk can't come take that from me. When you hustling, you selling dope. When you in the street, mm -hmm. that ain't your shit. Them folk can take that anytime. But when you pay taxes on it, it's yours. Mm -hmm. When you got it right, it's yours. Mm -hmm. And so my granddaddy was my role model. My daddy, he cool, but shit, he wasn't no daddy to me. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. so, so fast forward. 
get out, you start the clothing business. Mm -hmm. You get taken from the first one. First one, yeah. First one get taken from you. Yep. Then you start another one. Mm -hmm. How does that process work? Hold on, hold on. How did, how did the first one get taken? So, like, we, we talked about it on the other It's called pirating. Okay. You got people on the internet who just sit on the internet and they buy domain names. Okay. They buy trademarks. They buy LLCs. They just buy words and names and they mm -hmm. trademark them. Now they own them. And then when you come along, you like, damn, you thought of some shit. What's, what's the name of y'all? Y'all? Can I be real? Can I be real? Somebody can turn around and go trademark that because it's just a popular thing. Go trademark it. And then now you... Can I be real? It's blowing up. And now you like, damn, I'm finna go trademark. I'm finna go get t-shirts made. I'm finna go get logos made. And then when you type it in, you see, damn, somebody else got this shit in Omaha, Nebraska. Damn. Now what you gonna do now? You can't do nothing. Yeah. And they ain't doing shit with it. Mm -hmm. Now you gotta call them and try to try say, to hey man, to buy it from. yeah, I want this. And they go tell you, man, give me $10,000 or and then what happened to me? I started a company called Culture Worldwide, me and my best friend Ryan. And how we spelled it, C-V-L-T-V-R-E. Nobody was doing it at the time. This was it. I was in the penitentiary. So this was in 2011, 2012 when I did this. Nobody was doing it. Oh, so you it started at the time. this while you was like this? Yeah, in the pen. Gotcha. Like literally on my rack, came up with the idea, called my best friend Ryan, told him to go to a store in our hometown to buy these hats, get that word typed on there, and post it on the internet. First person who bought a hat from me was Victoria Vivian. She played in the WNBA. That's what's up. And that's how my shit just took off for now. Uh, uh, I put that shit on. That drink in the hood of my body, I'm dreaming that V-Lo. Shout out to go eat up, eat like the T-Mo. Smoke with that gas in the double cup, niggas, they know what I be on. I don't need a shoulder to lean on. I put that shit on. That drink in the hood of my body, I'm dreaming in v but people are still like just taking names trademarking them we lose the company and shit we just turn around got put our head together and then we came up with delore man that's crazy because it's, it's people out here I've, I've been doing clothes for a minute right mm -hmm. and there's people out here with free time that move around that can got access to vendors and wholesales and you know what I'm saying? And I, I just helped somebody today that's like asking me all these questions. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But it's like for you to start this in prison and do be successful at it, man. Like that's that, that take a lot of a lot of hard work and determination. You gotta want like, it, man. Yeah, you gotta want that mug bad. Like so I live by I live I by it in it some gang shit, but I live by it. Dedication, determination, discipline. Boy, you got them three things. Yeah. Can't nothing stop you. Yeah, say that one Dedication, yeah. determination, and discipline. Yeah. Triple D. Triple yeah. D. Then you got to live by your five Ps. Yeah. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. Yeah. Think about it. Think yeah. about that slowly. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. Mm -hmm. If you properly prepare for something, you won't fail. Because you're ready. You're ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I it's certain things like that, and it gang shit, <laughs> but it didn't start out like that. Yeah. It started out up. It started out as a way to uplift, uplift the black community and for us to be united and all that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I apply those things to my life, man, and it, it helped me out. It, may, it, it reminds me every day of why I got to work hard, who I'm working hard for. Okay. So, yeah. So, the closing company, mm -hmm. then you become top in Texas. Mm -hmm. Car sales. Top of Texas in car sales. Yep. And now you're doing real estate. Yep. And a finance manager. And a finance manager. Yep. You still doing the uh, lawn service? Yeah, no. Nah. Shit, it worked too much. Yeah. So <laughs> I, had to, I had to cut that out. So I gave it to. So another thing, if we're going to say that we care about the black community and stuff like that, we got to put other people on. For That's me, right. I knew a guy who cut grass. And this is what he do because he didn't have no other. He's never going to be a finance manager. He's never going to be a realtor. He's never going to own a clothing company. He's never going to own a business. But what he's good at is lawn service. What he's good at is cutting grass. 
So what I did was those people yards that I was cutting, I told them I won't be doing it, but I have a partner who's going to be cutting, gra cutting the grass in my, my place. Whole time, he ain't my partner. Mm -hmm. He just somebody who I knew that was cutting grass, mm -hmm. who needed, you know, the, these couple hundred dollars a week can help him out a lot. Yeah. So I gave it to him. So he took my routes and stuff that I was doing. Yeah. So I don't have, like, I don't have, like, free time. Like, Sunday, Wednesdays and Sundays are, like, my light days. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And even, even then, I can't see myself cutting grass when I know I got to go show a house. I got clothes and I got this. I need to spend time with my kids. I need to do this. I need to do this. You know, it, I need to run errands. Errands I didn't get to run Tuesday or Monday, I can run them on, on Wednesday. So, so yeah, man, what's it, bro? How do you, how do you balance it? Cause we talk about that too all the time. <clears throat> the balance of being just a man overall, bro. Kids, business, work, and then you still gotta try to find that way to to create that time for for itself without losing yourself. You know what I'm saying? Cause that's still the main. That's the most important thing. If you lose yourself, you lose everything else that come under that umbrella. Mm -hmm. So how you how you balance all that? Man, I just want this shit bad, man. It's like you got to remember your why. Like, why you do this? Yeah. Like, I do this for my kids, you know? Yeah. I do this so I never had to go back to Mississippi. I do this so I never had to be put in a situation where I got to sell dope again. I do this because, you know, I'm motivating other people who got the similar background to mine who feel like they can't do this. Yeah. Like, I'm showing them, like, bro, you can do this shit if you want it. Some niggas just don't want it. They want to check the hole. They want to be out at the club. They want to do that. They want to. I don't care about that shit. I've been fucking hoe. I've been in the clubs. I've been doing this. I've been doing it. I was doing this at a young age. Yeah. Like, man, I got yeah. kids. <laughs> I got re I got grown folk bills. Yeah. Boy, so it's like, man. when you are in a situation like that, bro, you got to do what you got to do. Like, even if you got to fucking say a cans, cut grass, if you got a scrape gum out the or clean of somebody's toilet. Yeah. When you got grown folk bills and you got kids, you'll do whatever it takes to provide for your kids and to never go back to the bullshit. Well, I think a lot of people do, they let ego, ego and pride get in the way. Cause a lot of people won't do half of that you just not fake. Man, pride, pride ain't never fed nobody. Ego ain't never pay nobody bill. Yeah, right. So, yeah, right. if you, and I say this, and people like to get mad when I say that, bro, you can't care about your kids if you ain't doing what, if you ain't doing what you need to do to provide for them or to change their zip code, you don't care about your kids to me. Yeah. And just change, just by changing your kid's zip code, you saving your kid from ever having to sell dope, little girl selling their body, sex trafficking, you changing all that. That shit happening in the hood. We can sit down and play all these games all we want. Yeah. That shit happening in the hood. Yeah, no, for sure. I sure is. When you can go get two, work two jobs, one job paying you, let's say, $4,000 a month, another one paying you $4,000 a month. Now you make eight bands a month. So you can go get, go stay in a nice neighborhood. You can go stay in Mansfield. You can go stay in South Lake. You can go stay in those places where they got good school district and Frisco and shit like that. Yeah. Put your kids in a good school, surround them by other good kids and people who trying to have something. You can do that. But if you stay in the hood, you you subjecting your kid to that hood shit, that dumb shit. Yeah. Much, we love music. We love trap shit. We love all that shit. But I don't expose my kid to that shit. I don't. My kid don't listen to no rap. They're twerking on table shit. We ain't doing that. I got little girls. Right. You know what I'm saying? That we is. like them hoes with them BBLs and That's them right. short pants on and all that. But <laughs> you don't want your kids being exposed to that right. type of shit. You know what I'm saying? So we, so we, it's crazy. We hypocrite. Bro. So we just spoke. We just, we just, right before you walked in, we were just speaking about uh, purpose, right? Mm -hmm. When a man finds his purpose, he changes the way he moves. Yep. Overall, you know what I'm saying? From, like you saying, chasing hoes to now you chasing your purpose. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like that stops your desire? For how would you word? Just wanting women, wanting, Can't, yeah, for man, wanting, yeah, for yeah. wanting to pleasure a woman. Cause, cause that's that was what we was talking about. Like you saying, right? So, like the question was, uh, if you on your purpose, yeah. right? Oh, uh, what's the question? Yeah. On uh, what's the question? Uh, we was talking about a purposeful man. 
True. gives less attention yes. to distractions. They see women pussy, like women that I used to would miss with. Once I'm walking in my purpose and I don't build myself up to a certain extent, then I look at that more as a distraction or a liability or yeah. a risk. More it is. So does purpose curb, you know what I mean? Your appetite. Your appetite. Yes. Oh, oh. Yes. Break it down. I'm a, I'm a living. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a living testimony, bro. Yeah. Like when I ain't had shit, I fuck everything walking. Chicks with the big booties, big titties, no, like I want. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah, yeah. She turned me on. Yeah. But when you get money, when you trying to have some, mm -hmm. man, all pussy. Then when you, then when you start noticing, all pussy feel the same. I'm telling you because nowadays you got to look at the generation we in now. But these women want you to take them out. They want you. They want. They want you to be picked. They want to be picked up in a certain type of car. They want you wearing a certain type of clothes. Mm -hmm. That shit called money. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, I was a sucker for that shit. I was a person who had to have the designer shit, had to have the fly car. Mm -hmm. I had to be positioned a certain way because I know what these women want. But when you in your purpose, when you striving for something. Man, fuck that chick. She ain't. That's when you start seeing like, man, she just, just she just like the rest of these motherfuckers. And what benefit? What is the benefit of me talking to you? A lot of women right now to this day in on in in Dallas, Mississippi, everything. You know what they say about me? Oh, he ain't shit. But then you ask them why? They gonna give you a list of things because I won't conform to trying to trying to please them. I ain't pleasing a no woman. You ain't mine. I ain't buying you. I ain't taking you out to eat. Yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you hungry, yeah. just say, hey, Devon, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Give me some couple dollars. Give me something to eat. Hey. But don't try to finesse me to like you because you want to go eat just so you can post it on your, your story with the caption and, you know, all that they little shit. They ain't going to show me. Yeah. yeah. Bitch, nah. Y'all yeah. remember what they said? I'm going to start using it. I said, you know what fits and don't fit. Can you do it? Benefit. Benefit. Yeah, benefit. Benefit. Oh, real. Benefit. It don't benefit, it don't benefit me. If it, if it don't benefit me, what am I doing it for? Mm -hmm. Like Denzel, did y'all y'all that, that quote he said? He said people say you too good for us. Yep. No, I just don't go places. I don't make no yeah, money. Face, face, face. I ain't doing nothing if it ain't making me no money. Yeah. What am I doing? What I'm going to the club for? Y'all ain't paying for me me to do no walkthrough. Mm -hmm. Because when I get in here, you gotta buy drinks. Yep. And they're gonna be high cost to get in that motherfucker. Yeah, you gotta pay the park. We in Dallas. The price. Yeah. For real. You gotta have a new fit. fit. Nah, for real. She wants some. She thirsty. <laughs> her tongue hanging out her mouth, lip dry. So you got to get her something to drink. Yep. That shit yeah, cost money. Folks, you know what? You just spent two, three hundred dollars, yeah. and you could have took that two, three hundred dollar, went down to the county courthouse and asked them, "Do you have any tax lien deeds for sale?" That's now you buy a tax lien deed for three hundred dollars. This three hundred dollar deed is to a two hundred thousand dollar property. You own it, but instead you want to go buy that bitch a drink. Excuse my language. You want to go buy her a drink. Mm -hmm. You want to go impress her, some more girls. You want to impress your partners. The, the bottles was that they just did in Houston. Mm -hmm. Y'all spent yeah, all that money yeah, on liquor. Just to pour it up. Pour it on the ground. And I guarantee you, you follow them folks home, they stay in the apartment. The car that they driving at least, they probably got a charger with a paper tag on the back. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you, you hear me? These folks spent thousands of dollars. None of them don't own no property. They don't own no business, none of that. Just to pull it out. So let me ask you this then, you know, like since we on that subject, like what do you think like as far as like men get money, right? Once once you get money, you get a, you live a certain type of lifestyle, you know what I mean? And and like we were talking about earlier, like like it changed you. And my, my position was that like for me, for example, right? Mm -hmm. Just you know, it was a certain point in my life where I wasn't making no money, right? Yeah. I've been married sixteen years. Girl. Then it got to a point to where I started doing motivational speaking, start, you know, elevating, start getting the big head, right? Slipped up, you know, made some mistakes in my marriage, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I felt like I was still a good man, mm -hmm. right? And I felt like I was still on my purpose, right? But the question was, I was asking those guys, like, do that desire ever go away? Because at the same time, we men at the end of the day, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And, and we gonna have that, right? Yeah. And if that energy match, then it just match, right? I told them the desire don't ever But go I'm, that's away. why I'm it like, don't go, it don't exactly. go away. So it's it like, don't go away. you gotta fight that. Them demons that you gotta constantly Dedication, fight. determination, discipline. Yeah. yeah. 
these are things that a man must have. Thanks. He got to be dedicated. He got to be determined. He must have discipline. Because if you don't have discipline, you're going to end up with AIDS. Yeah. Real talk. Real talk. Four by karate, boy. Yeah, three yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Think about yeah. it now. Because if you, if, once like again, <laughs> when I was in college, <laughs> <laughs> when I was in college, fool, I promise you, and by the grace of God, when I was in college, I was sleeping with a different girl every day. Yeah. I was on some Wilt Chamberlain shit. Yeah. I, I by the did. grace of God. But, you know, I was still in condom. I'll yeah. make sure I wear a rubber. That yeah. one thing my uncle always said. <laughs> <laughs> you got to have. I was still. <laughs> I couldn't afford it. How you still? Hold on. Can I be real? How you still come? Like, hey, you, Either, you go in the Walmart. Yeah. Pull them out the box. Yeah. Put them in your pocket. Put the box bag on the counter. You walk yeah. out. So you the reason why they got the motherfucking Why they got in the counter? Why they got in the counter? I'm the reason. For real. You the For real talk. Yeah. Hey, you hey, 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 now that now that that old ass white lady, what what size you want? Now you gotta tell that man. Give him big one, man. You know what size for the kid? Give him big one. <laughs> what but, you say again? Yeah, yeah, in front of everybody. You, know, yeah. you, you got to wait, yeah. wait till the whole aisle clear out before you tell that. <laughs> nah, but, yeah, see, but, see, but nah, but see, that's that's another thing. We gotta stop being like that. We should be we should be we should be celebrating somebody going to the counter with a, a box, box of, of condom. condom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We should true. be like, Well, I see you, my boy, hey, yeah. hold it down. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, do your thing, my yeah, boy. Yeah, yeah. What you ashamed of some condom for? Yeah, we spoke that's what we supposed to be wearing anyway. We walk into the mud like, like like we you got some tampons or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I used to go to the gas station. I go in there buy a box of cars. I'm buying three or four other things. We gonna push it. Yeah, no. Nah. Man, yeah. listen. Yeah. Hey, yeah. let me get some Magnum XL. They want. They want. Nah, now nah, that one. They want right there. Yeah, yeah. Give me those. Yeah, so give me you know them. what I'm saying? Because we gonna complain. We it's crazy. Like, this type of world we live in, bro. We we complain about the AIDS, HIV, syphilis rate, all that type of mm-hmm. shit. But we also clown people who are in the store buying right, safe sex product. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy yeah, what type of world crazy. we live in. Yeah. But the that's desire right. never go away, yeah. dog. Never. It'll never go away. I see women right now. I'm like, damn, she says, damn, she look good. But I go on by my business. You just yeah. look good. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm just I'm just of the, of the mindset, like, divine purpose. If it's meant for us to link up, we go link up. So that's why I was telling my, my uncle and my good no, brother no, back there. I was, te- I was telling them. <laughs> no, you I was telling them. <laughs> That the desire never goes away. No matter how far in your purpose that you get, you always gonna find a attractive, significant other. You may not be in no position to where, oh, it like let me let me relationship with you or whatever. It may just be on some. I mean, we, we didn't linked up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's it. You feel me? And we keep it pushing. Yeah. yeah we say that much. But what we told him is gonna minimize because at the end of the day, I got too much to lose. Yeah. I'm Facts. Not give that. So we didn't say the desire wasn't gonna go. We just said it's gonna go from batting a thousand to batting five percent, ten percent. No, for sure. I mean? yeah. and for it's gonna sure. Have to make sense. That's and some it. women, and some women just ain't. It ain't worth it, bro. I'm telling you. Yeah, she Thanks. look good, but she ain't shit. Yeah. yeah. She sleeping on the air mattress. Yeah. You want that cat? That is fact. Her tray can't overflowing. <laughs> Hey. You want that cat? Yeah. Hey, like, it just, for me, and it's not being bougie or high class and then like that, but, you know, my girl make over six figures. Double what I make. Why would I sleep, why would I cheat on her for a chick who work at McDonald's Wendy or who make $12 an hour? She got a fat ass. Yeah. And he, did, did y'all hear the Dick Gregory um, story? What, what Dick Gregory he said? said all them things. He said, "That what it." He said, yeah. "What that what it do to it?" Yeah. He said, "When you go on Kmart, yeah. you see a big trash can. That what the big ass is. That yeah. what all the do to it." That's for real. That's real. But he said, think right about right it. Right. Think about it. You eat some, it go down here and it yeah. stop here and it come out. That's right. But you know, man, it's, it's crazy. Back in the day, women women had big butts. Back in the day, you and know they called them fat. And exactly like back in the day, I remember seeing like my uncles and older cousins with like the nice, petite, small women. You know what I'm saying? Like the the the, the you know the the slims. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like that was sexy back then. It's like now, like sexy is like like you say the big ass injected. The big but that's what they t- it's, it's, exactly. it's a it's a it's a marketing play, bro. Yes, yes, yes. It's yes. a marketing play. It's the music, the the movies, it all it all it's ties, all ties marketa- into it. Mar- yeah. It's marketability. I think I said it right. That's it. Yeah. Like man, that ain't that just because. You, and I say this all the time. And I, and one thing about it, I'm gonna keep real with chicks. That's why a lot of females in Dallas don't like me. I'm mm-hmm. gonna keep it solid. Mm-hmm. Shit. 
I don't give a damn. Mm-hmm. But you just because you got a big ass don't mean nothing. You ain't, f- you ain't that pretty. Not facts. But you want to act sedated because you got a, you want to pay ten thousand dollars to get your body done. Mm-hmm. That's not gonna make me like you. Mm-hmm. That don't make you can't talk to me no any type of way because you look a certain way Thanks. or you know this nigga or you used to fuck this person or you used to fuck this person. They don't mean nothing to mm-hmm. me. And I'm always going to keep it real because a lot of chicks like to throw up that they used to talk to this. Oh, so such and such hit. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's it. That yeah, that's all that means. That's means. What are we doing? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. you dropping names. Yeah. Oh, I, I used to talk to such and such. So? They didn't keep you for a reason. Yeah, no, no, they, they got in, got what they want, yeah, they, they do. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. I want to hit. Be in a relationship. Yeah, no, relationship. Yeah, 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 niggas yeah, ain't yeah. wifing you. Yeah, yeah, niggas, ain't, niggas ain't wifing you. And yeah. then they so, I won't say they, they dumb. Some women are dumb to where they not taking advantage of the opportunity. Thanks. Get their money. Yep. Instead, yep. you want to go get a bag. Yep. Yep. Tell them give you that ten thousand dollars and go put it in a yeah, go go put it real. in go put it in real estate. Go put it in something that's gonna um grow in interest. Yes. You want a purse. Yes. You want a BBL. You want that. You want that. Material. Yeah. Material issues. So why are we talking about this, right? We we on this subject. The what's going viral now is the 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 women rappers, right? We got mm-hmm. the Glorillas, we got the sexy reds with yep. you know, talking about the booty hole brown and you know what I'm saying? Twerking on the headlights and stuff. You yeah. you got three daughters, right? Yeah. I got a daughter, you got a daughter. All of us got daughters, right? And mm-hmm. and for me, you know, we, we try to teach, you know, I try to teach my daughter like respect for yourself. You know what I'm saying? I'm teaching her love yourself. Like we talk about the affirmations. Um, but it's like at the same time, they being distracted because you know, they friends listen to this stuff. They friends may be influenced by, but what we putting in them may not be there, right? So for me, it's like I'm trying to be that that big that voice in their ear, right? Mm-hmm. My question for you is like, so how how are y'all dealing with that with with these women that's that's going viral for saying some outlandish stuff, some some stuff that you know I totally don't agree with how women should act, right? Mm-hmm. But our daughters growing up seeing this stuff, like like how are you able to navigate that and, and make sure that your daughter stay on the right track and, and not get sucked into that? Start at home, bro. Yeah, that's it. It ain't nowhere around start at the house Thanks. because if the parents exposing the kids to it, it just streamlining them turning out to be whatever it is that you don't want them to be. Hey. You streamlining lining that process. But I'm just blessed to have baby mamas, you know, who that wasn't even their thing. Mm-hmm. Twerking on tables, mm-hmm. bullshit. They might listen to the music, but dang, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Ain't nothing like that because mm-hmm. my girls, good grades, you know, they they look girls, yeah. you know. It's certain things that they allowed to do, you know. No TikTok, you know. No social media. We ain't on that. Mm-hmm. So it starts at the house, man. You know, I I I'm a father. Like I yeah. might not be in the house with with my girls, but shit, I'm there. Yeah. You know, yeah. and my kids know my expectations. They know what I expect out of them. So I don't I don't deal with that. But you know, and I ain't knocking the female rappers. But shit, nah, nah, we gonna have an issue yeah. if my kid come home trying to quote songs. They already know we gonna have a major issue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they try to stay off my back. My kid's smart. They just try to stay off my bad side. Yeah. Yeah. They know not to piss me off. So nah, I don't, I don't have them issues, yeah. man. Yeah. Just you gotta, you gotta parent. You gotta parent. Yeah, I think I'm learning it too. Like my my Darcy file. But I'm I'm steady. I'm learning that you really have to. You can't really. You can't be their friend. Right. You gotta be their parent. You yeah. know what I'm saying? As much as you want to love on them, and you know what I'm saying, you want them to always be that precious little girl. You gotta you gotta parent them. You know what I'm saying? So like, you know, I, I learned from watching you. You know how you, where you move too. But I appreciate it one more time for the camera. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Sixteen yeah. years in this thing. Shout out to Shorty, Lil D, and Zoe. Yeah. <laughs> But no, nah, it's like it's for me. It's like I'm picking up stuff on the back. I ain't, I ain't that deep in the game yet. You know what I'm saying? She fine, but I, I watch how she move at an early age too. Like you said, I don't let her listen to rap. You know, uh, definitely not no, yeah. not no sex. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, a little girl should know about yeah. no booty hole. Exactly. Yeah. Unless it's referring to you cleaning that motherfucker. Exactly. Nah, it's really like you, <laughs> that's the only yeah. thing we need yeah. to be talking about booty hole. It, do, your booty hole stank or not? Yeah. Clean yeah. your ass yeah. when you get done using the bathroom. Yeah. But all that. It. You that other shit? Nah, 
Nah, we ain't, we ain't, I'm telling you, we ain't doing that. Yeah, and sure. little girls should always be little girls, man. Don't stop growing your kids up too Thanks. fast. I'm not even fan of like the weave and, you know, that's all that type of shit. Like, that's like they doing them, that's a yeah, lot of them, they yeah. doing them. Listen, Frontals man, my, my and daughter, all that My daughter's 15, man, and she, the most weave she get is like braids. But yeah. she already asking like, daddy, can I get a wig? And I'm no. like, nah, you ain't getting no wig. And mm -mm. she like, daddy, can I wear lashes? And I'm like, nah, but she like, mm -mm. all my friends, but I'm like, listen, this for me, like, I don't care what your friends doing because your friends don't live in my house, right? Like you live in my house. I control you. When you go out in these streets, you a representation of me, your mama and your brother. So when you go out here in these streets, I want you to represent me the way I'm gonna represent you. Because when I go out here, they gonna look at me and say, oh, that's Zoe's dad, that's Dion's dad, that's mm -hmm. Charlotte's husband. So it's like, as a father, as a husband, and for myself, I wanna represent myself. Like we was talking about at that highest level. So. I, I want my kids to reciprocate that, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I try, but it I ain't gonna lie, it's hard though, man, cause- I like how you broke every that down. Every day, every day she asking, can I get a wig, can I get lashes? You know, it's like, but, at but, at the, but you know, and it takes time, like when you was talking earlier and we all talking about being on your purpose, right? And and really like honing into that. And, and I was saying like, you know, about when I was going through my experience, one thing that I will say that made me change that was my kids, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Cause I realized like, man, I don't want my son growing up and be no womanizer. I don't want nobody to grow up and do my daughter like I was doing these women or yeah. hurt her like I, you know, hurt her mom, you know what I'm saying? So things like that play in my mind. So for me, it's like every day I want to be a better man for my kids, for my wife, for myself first, mm -hmm. but especially for them, man. Cause it's like seeing what this generation is going it's like, like you said, it got to start in the home, man. You got to be putting that every single day because it's like once they get a little taste of something, mm -hmm. they, they they run with it. What they say, give you a give you a inch, inch you and you'll take a mile, bro. Like, they like, they want to be a cowboy. Because so. how, how can you not have a father in your house and then not be a father in your house? Yeah, exactly. Like, and that's what I think about. Like, my dad don't want shit. How can I not be a father to these little girls? And I brought them in the world. Hey. You know what I'm saying? Like I can't, I can't do it, man. And then you, and that's what we go back to what we're talking about: unprotected sex. You got to be careful, and you got to know who you sleeping with raw, mm -hmm. because you slip ups can happen. You you mess around, get these women pregnant, then what? Now you would had a baby story. by somebody who, and 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 it's no disrespect to nobody, but even with my youngest daughter, when me and her mama was thinking about having a kid, we went through the process of like. Uh, getting our chromosome tested, everything. We went through that whole process. Who has Down syndrome in their family? Mm -hmm. Who have a history of scoliosis yeah, and all this type yeah. of stuff? Because if so, if so happened, we have this kid together, and this kid has a potential of having these defects. We don't need to have no kid. Yeah. We don't. So if you sleeping with somebody you don't know, they got a history of mental issues in their family, blah, 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 bipolar, and all this, and then you have this kid, and this kid fucked up. You know? What's going on? You know what I'm saying? So we need to be mindful of who we sleeping with. We need to get to know these women better. And we need to decide, and it's, and it's go crazy. Some, some, some people going to be like, man, they need that talk. Man, it's crazy. Get to know these women before you stick your dick in them. Because at the end of the day, if something was to happen, this is somebody you got to be with 18 years, 19 years, 20 years, rest of your at life. At least. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And my daughter, I got 13, 7, and 1. So. Every six years. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. So you got to be my, you, everything you do, you got to think before you do it. Like, mm -hmm. stop going, we going, we going crazy out here. Face, face, So, so face. look, because uh, we kind of getting, kind of getting close to the end, man, but they said something about a, a clothing brand, a clothing line or something. Yeah. We tapped into that, man. You know, okay. Yeah. Love it. You got the first one taken, you know what I'm saying? Like, what's up with that? Talk to us about the line. So Delore, that's my clothing company, is a non-gender specific brand because, you know, you gotta we gotta be mindful of the community, the society that we in. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to make sure I say it right. Yeah. 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 Because and you know, my brother gay. Yeah. And he wear women clothes. Yeah. You know, one of my closest friends is a stud. She wear men clothes. So why are we making clothes that say men, female, mm -hmm. men, women? Delore is a non-gender specific brand. If you're a woman and you want to wear a baseball cap, put it on. If you're a woman you want to wear J's, put them on. If you're a man and you want to wear a dress, put it on. 
If you like it, buy it. That's my, that's like my mission said, statement. Like, if you like it, buy it. If you like it, buy it. You know what I'm saying? And so <laughs> I started like Delore in 2017, and um, that's 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 been my that's been my baby, man. 2017, 2018. Um, we got a whole we got a lot of stuff coming, man. We we doing a lot of stuff, but we trying to do things outside of clothes. You know what I'm saying? Like it ain't just gonna be clothes. It's gonna be you know, it's a brand with a purpose, but we're gonna sell clothes in the process. So, mm. so look, this is cannot be real, right? Yep. This man has just sat here and told us that he has a clothing brand that ain't gender specific. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And I, I don't have no opinion about it either way. You know what I mean? So that's not why I'm saying this. Yeah. But I'm saying this is cannot be real podcast. Nothing ran through now because yeah, that's yeah. not every day. First of all, nah, it's sure. not every day. I've never heard of, especially coming from a black man. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like I ain't never heard that. You know what I mean? I ain't never heard a black man show that kind of empathy, understanding, that compassion mm -hmm. towards that yeah. the community. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I just went to the Beyonce concert, and it was 75, 80 percent. You know, not not women, but I'm saying the men. It was it was a, it was the community. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And I was and I told I told my lady I got a new fan respect for Beyonce. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because as a straight black man, people look at the community. And oh, 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 and they do oh, all that. Man. But when I went to the concert, I was like, man, she really providing a space for them people to just be. She loves yes. and they love. So when you go off on it, like, you feel the love. So I left with a greater respect and love for Jay Z and Beyonce. You know oh, what yeah. I'm saying? But with that being said, this man just sat here, we on Cannot Be Real. And he said that he got a. Gen well, I ain't never heard of it. Gender, got gender specific a non nah. gender specific nah. brand. I do not. But he he, he getting ready to explain why. But he, I don't like I don't like, and I'm gonna keep it real. I'm a man. Yeah. I know who I am. I know who I sleep with. I know what I like. That has nothing to do with nobody else. I don't have no issue with gay folk, trans folks, non-binary, none of that. I love. I actually love everybody. When I first started Delore. A guy, I never D A L O R E. Okay. I never forget a dude from my hometown. His name J D Or, gay, gay or criminal, super cool. <laughs> he said gay or criminal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Christmas, because you know they say like gay, gay married, yeah, you know stuff yeah, like yeah. that. And and I joke with him about it, but he ended up buying one of my shirts, long sleeve shirts. He buy the pants, he cut the, the, the seam from right here and turned it into a dress. And so I didn't post the picture, but I didn't post it because of him being gay or none of it. I just didn't post the picture. But he got offended by it and said I didn't post it because he was gay. Mm. And it just made me think, I'm like, damn, that wasn't even the case. But it made me start like, bruh, we can't be, we can't, this man support me. He bought my shit. He spent his hard-earned money on my shit. And he feared that I didn't post him because mm -hmm. of who he chose to sleep with. And from then on, I just like, nah, we finna do something different. We finna accept everybody. And I'm like that now. Gay people, trans, non-binary, whatever it is that you do that has nothing to do with me. If you like what I'm pushing out, go buy it. If you like it, go get it. And I look, and I'm telling you, What's that say? In order, to, you you aren't a man if you don't know how to display, especially when we having girls. You got to be able to show a a side of feminine masculinity. Mm -hmm. You got to because because we soft with them girls, yeah. but then we tough with the boys. Yeah. But you can't do that because now you raising a little boy who's not gonna be able to express himself. He's gonna be tough. He's gonna be hard. He gonna be cruel. He gonna be rude. He gonna be disrespectful. But I think that's just how we raise though, as, as men. But you can't do that because you got to teach <laughs> little boys how to, a little boy shouldn't have to go to his mama to be loved and hugged on. My mama ain't never hugged me. So it took me a long time to really appreciate a woman. Because yeah. my mama didn't hug me. I didn't know how they show affection. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? How can I go home to my girl? And it, it took me a long time for me to just be open with my girl about love and Hug and kiss. I was just trying to beat. See, but for me, like I got a son, right? My son ten, and I'm gonna be real. Can I be real? Like I, I'm the the man. Like you know what I'm saying? I, and I'm trying to be not trying to be. I present myself as the man all the time to yeah. my son because just can I be real? I don't want my son to grow up gay. You know what I'm saying? And I and that's a 
like in the back of my mind, that's one like a, a fear in my head. Like, bro, like I don't want my son to be gay. Not like I'm homophobic or I don't like gay people or nothing, mm -hmm. but you like, you want I'm a straight man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But and you I do know, and I'm gonna tell you because my brother told me, and I don't mean to cut you off. Yeah. But you do know, it ain't net. You can nah, put face. him in any face. sport. You can do all this. They ain't go. Nah, face. If it's if it's for him, it's yeah, for him. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But but it I, ain't but I, you but can I, do. But I think it's it's you know for me it's like I want to at least be guilty of guiding him in the right direction. Bro, you know it ain't what I'm nothing. Saying? It ain't my dad and, and making it, him understand like at least this is an uh, example of how a man should be. You know what I'm still saying? Still ain't go. Still, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> But it ain't nothing you could do about it because I'm one of the people who believe that we get gay people because of they are born this way, mm -hmm. and when something happened to them, Dang. when they mean they was touched at a, a yeah. young age and they yeah. were exposed to things at a young age, mm -hmm. it ain't got nothing to do with no football, no, it ain't got nothing to do with none of that, playing with dogs, ain't got nothing to do with none of that. When they get taken advantage of as a young kid, mm -hmm. it just shapes their whole life. As well as they be born that way. Because mm -hmm. my brother been gay all my life. That's your older or your younger brother? My older brother. Got it, got it. And we ain't never two, three years apart. He been gay forever. He just ain't had nobody to be gay with. Like I said, he just ain't had nobody to be gay with. Mm -hmm. that young yeah, and, and then you got people who force him like, Wait, what? oh, you a little boy. Throw this football. <laughs> all that type of shit. Mm -hmm. But the whole time, he like, I don't want to throw this football. I want to go look at the boys who playing football. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you, can but I tell be real? Can and, I be real? That, what my uncle said. <laughs> my uncle told him, and it's funny. He said, because my brother, you know, coming out saying that he gay. Got it. And my, they just looked at him because he like, you know, y'all seen the Madea movie, right? Yeah. Well, the guy came out, he gay. Everybody was just quiet looking at him. Like we know, like, like they nigga, we knew. been knew you were gay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like that with my brother. Like yeah. they were like, man, we been you was a gay baby. We yeah. been know you were gay. <laughs> my uncle said, I just wanted to got one question, and hey, you the man or the woman? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's that's what, like, that's what he like, that's yeah. the only thing we care about. Uh, you on the top or you on the mm -hmm, bottom? Mm -hmm. That said, don't matter. Care about you being gay. Yeah. That said, people being gay, you know, broke it down to him. He just bust out crying. He like, yeah. I can't believe it. Yeah. He like, I thought y'all were gonna be disown me, all that type of shit. Yeah. And like I say, bro. When gay people come up and be like, ain't you DeVars? You got there, you got there, take a picture with me. I'm taking that motherfucker yeah. all around him and everything. This person spent their hard earned hey, money. It hey. ain't got nothing to do with me being gay. Yeah, nah, that's And that's the type of world we live in. We think just if we touch somebody gay, we gonna get gay. Mm -hmm. Or they gonna try to fuck us or something. Mm -hmm. like if no. Yeah. <laughs> they, gonna fuck, yeah, yeah. they gonna fuck you if you wanna be fucked. Hey, hey. <laughs> if you don't wanna be fucked, they ain't gonna fuck miss you. With yeah, you. they know. Yeah. So let me ask you this, you know what I mean? About, and, and I love you. Nah, face. Right. You know what I mean? But what do you think about what's going on right now? You know, or where do you draw the line? Like they got the cis male, cis female. You know what I'm saying? Where they want to redefine. But I don't care. You don't care. It has net like it really has nothing to do with me. Yeah. Is it? I understand because everybody want to identify with who they want to identify with or be who they want to be, and I'm always of. Uh, be who you want to be. But don't if say, you want to be a woman, be a woman. I think. I think it, for me, I fight. It has to be a line at some point, somewhere, because you have to. Because then, then that's when you have men walking in the girls' restroom, just saying, "Okay, I identify as a woman today." You know and and I get that. I told I, when I say I totally understand that. But we also gonna have to conform with the world. It ain't net, It ain't nothing we can do about it. It literally. We is nothing we can do about it because at the end of the day, are you gonna go sign a petition to stop it? No, Have you signed a petition to stop it? Sign that one petition. That's what I'm saying. So it, it and, and that's the thing, and and no disrespect nobody in here. I'm just saying we always like to complain about shit, but we ain't doing nothing about it. Mm -hmm. If we have issue with men going in the women bathroom, women going in the men bathroom, do somebody. But the fact that we ain't did shit about it, yeah. you gotta you gotta conform. And I'm just a nigga who, I was in the penitentiary. I had to adapt mm -hmm. to stand up all day, sleeping in, uh, stand, sleeping during the day, staying up all night because I'm scared somebody go stab me. You gotta conform, and it's ain't nothing we can do. They say it's over 72 different genders in the world. Mm -hmm. When I grew up, it was just man and woman. Yep. But the society we live in 
anybody can identify with whatever they want. You got people who say, don't call them a man, a woman, or whatever. They, they. I'm non-binary. I'm they. Yeah. I'm I'm a dog. I'm a yeah, cat. Yeah, yeah. I'm a frog. <laughs> a motherfucker can be anything they want to be in the world. I'm a diamond. Yeah. How do you feel like, like he say, like, it ain't about, like, what you gonna do. It's like, how much you gonna do. Because you, you could be doing something just by talking and having a conversation saying, okay, this wrong. I don't feel like this. I feel like this. But how much are you going to do to sway the perception of what the world should be or what you feel like it should look like? I don't think you should try to change the world, though. I think you should just work on your household. Right. It, it, it's even speaking for, for myself. Right. Speaking, I, think, I think like, that's the only way we, you can do it. Yeah, I, I understand that. But I'm saying, like, we saying, like, well, we got these rappers saying this. Or oh. We got these. Trying to push this, you know, people they, they sure. push together, then they don't hear everybody. Sure. Like, nah. Well, how much are we gonna do? You know what I'm saying? I don't think. It's I don't think nobody can push nothing on you. Like yeah. if you if you know who you are, can't nobody push nothing on you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We just need to do a better job of like loving our kids, supporting our kids, and listening. And the main thing I tell people who got kids, listen to your kid. Hey. The kid go tell you what's going yeah, on. They gonna tell you everything. They gonna tell you yeah. everything. Yeah. Yep. But we don't talk to our kids. Yep. We had them little bullshit conversation of how was your day, how did, how did, how did. When I talk to my girl and my baby mom be telling me, you going too far. Hey, ain't nobody play. Try to stick their hand in your yep. pan hey, today, did hey, Nah, that's real. That's that's the conversation. Hey, we have. sending somebody to the bone yard if, if anybody play with you. And that was a conversation I had with my kids like, how was your day today? Okay. Like literally, how was your day? Yeah, what did you do today? Yeah, what did yeah. what, what did you, you eat think today? About? What did you feel? Yeah. How do you feel about this? Yeah, yeah. And them kids go tell you. Yep. And then it's up to you as a parent to just listen to them, understand what they're saying, and try to help them versus saying, ah, oh, nah, you don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. Nah, because then now you're pushing them to go do with it, all that other shit. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think kids need to change their gender at a young age. You know what I'm saying? I don't I don't think a kid can say, a little boy can say, I want to be a girl and I want to get my thing cut off. We ain't doing that. Yeah. Because eventually when you grow up, you're going to be, you want, you going to want to use that motherfucker. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, you going to want to, you going to want to do yeah. something with it. So I don't think that should happen. You shouldn't make that decision until you grown. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? But as far as in somebody, a little boy saying he want to be a girl or like, I don't agree with it, but you can't do them, but you can't do them except what you go diss on your kid. And I say this, my kid, my son and my daughter, they can be gay. They can be whatever. Long down be no LeBron James fan or no goddamn Cowboy <laughs> fan. We straight. I'm going to love my kid. I don't care oh, how. Yeah. Who you saying? Right, 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 we sure appreciate y'all, man. Who you saying? I'm a Bulldog fan. Okay. Yeah. 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 I ain't rock with no Cowboys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't do it. I ain't rock with no LeBron. Yeah. I, know, I know I'm yeah. beating for your birthday now. Yeah, nah, hell. Yeah. 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 Cowboys, yeah. we'll send that motherfucker to the Goodwill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> hell, nah. Hey, man, this has been a good one, man. Like, yeah. for real, man. We got some man. questions, it's too, man. It's been a pleasure, for real. But, hey, hey yeah, ask, me, do, ask me, ask me. Man, listen, at the end of every show, man, we, we do two things. We have our Can I Be Real moments to where, you know, we're going to ask you a couple questions, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, by way of of my boy King Mazza, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? He gonna get you right. And then you. after that, uh, we got a viral moment, man, to where you gonna close the show out for us. You gonna look into that camera right there. That's your camera. Uh, the big joint right there. That big one. Pause. Yeah, pause. pause. Yeah, pause. <laughs> why you yeah. gotta say pause? Why we just can't say a big Yeah, one? That's, that's real. Why do we gotta <laughs> yeah, say pause? Yeah, why we gotta say pause? Nah, I just, it's just funny <laughs> me. Yeah, I, don't, yeah. I don't conform to like them New York rules yeah. where people be like, pause. pause after everything. everything. Yeah, yeah, I ain't. Say nothing in New York now. I just bro. think if you thinking about that already, exactly. you, it's on your it's mind. It's on your mind, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, I ain't pause. really. That's, that's, that's the young thing. That's, right? yeah, yeah, that's yeah. You gotta say pause after everything, bro. Well, hey, look into that Sony. <laughs> camera <laughs> we gotta break that mug down xdlr7 yeah but yeah man so uh let's let's go ahead and get into man, i cannot so be real moments man. Questions, man you just answer to the, to the best of your business okay you had a black barbecue okay what's one thing you don't do black barbecue one thing you don't do mm. 
I ain't finna get no potato salad without asking <laughs> who made it. And then I ain't gonna try, I ain't gonna eat before the women and the kids. Okay. Yeah, okay, that, okay. I ain't okay. doing that. Yeah, he's he's violent. Wait, what? The kids or the potato salad? I'm gonna eat the potato salad for sure. Yeah, I'm gonna eat the potato salad. I gotta ask. I gotta see who made it. I eat first, then I ask. I eat first, then I ask. I'll be like, who made the potato salad? That's gonna let you know if it's good. Yeah, they'll be like, such and such made it, and I know how such and such cook. Nah. Yeah. All right, okay. Unbeady made it. Okay, nah. I'm cool. I'm cool. All right, question number two. Who is the champion? You're gonna fight. Okay. You gotta fight. One of these three, and which one you feel like you coming out on top winning? Okay. A lion, Mike Tyson, or Charles Sipway. <laughs> who I got to win? Hey, who, who you, who you got I'm to taking pretend? Charles the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> he can't have no mace. He can't have no mace. He brought the mace. He brought the mace. No, to the uh, to the uh, to the uh, way in. Yeah, to the face. Yeah, I seen that. Ain't that pink poker, boy? You see, he that. Huh? Nah, he brought it. He brought the mace. He sprayed the headliner. When we say Charleston White, we talking about his game. Yeah, his game. Yeah, everything. Everything. Yeah. everything. Oh, who you going to take your chance with? Tyson? Charleston? What's up? Oh, I, I, probably, I probably would try Tyson because... If Charleston White got them, them that spray, you can't win. Yeah, he's gonna spray your ass win. in yeah, the face and yeah. then attack you, then you can't win. With the line, you definitely ain't finna win, hands down. And with Mike Tyson, you know. Prime Tyson. It just depends. For like, sure. am I, are we in a ring? Are we in an open spot? Yeah, out in the street. In the street, I'll take Tyson. Take because Tyson. now I get to move around. I ain't in no confined, confined spot. Where's Tyson? But still, Charleston White got that spray. Yeah, they got that spray. <laughs> they're lying. That motherfucker yeah, yeah, big. Yeah, yeah, a lion yeah, is yeah, big yeah, as hell. Yeah, that yeah, motherfucker like the size of this. Yeah, nah, nah, sure. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> next, next question. You in the Alabama fight. Okay. You on the, you on the, you on the, you on the dock. Dun, 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 dun. You got three people you can be. Would you rather be the Aquaman, the Hat Man, or the Chair Man? I'd be the Hat Man. Because I'm finna sue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm I'm a sue. I'm gonna let y'all beat my head, and then we go into court. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cause that's how you win now. You don't you don't you don't win by putting your hands on folk nowadays. I learned that. You take that at the court, hit them pocket. Yeah, mm -hmm. the you hit them hurt, pocket, boy. the pocket hurt. Man. It hurt a long man, time too. Cause man. I hit you in the face, you get a black eye, you get you know swole look. That shit gonna go down with some ibuprofen and some ice and shit like that. Yeah. But when I hit them pocket, that shit gonna hurt. Ooh, my three. that shit gonna hurt you. Long time, your credit go take a hit. Your old lady go leave you. The dog, the kid go hate you because you were there for them. That shit go be just generational. I'm gonna hit that pocket. Okay, okay. Last question. Okay. Favorite struggle meal? Uh, penitentiary food: noodles, some chips, the pickles, spread? cheese. Spread. See y'all call it spread. Well, what y'all call it? Knitting. A meal. A meal. <laughs> Something to eat. Dinner. Yeah, it's Supper. Y'all call it spread. Call I spread nah. Out here, yeah. nah, it just shit. Something to eat. We finna eat. <laughs> so, so, so if you if you can, can I this is the can I be real moment, man. So if you could just walk us through how to prepare like that perfect, you know what I'm saying, with the noodles yeah, and the ask, chips and the pickles. So yeah, it do depend on what we got that day. So I'm gonna just do a regular one. So I'll top, I'm gonna get the noodles, I'm gonna slam them on the ground, crumble them up. Well, you never in the penitentiary, you not eat no noodle, slurping no noodle. And then like that. You ain't doing that in the pen. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> so you go slam them on the ground, you'll crumble them up. Then you go go get you a bowl. You you could do it two ways. You could heat the water up first, then put the noodles in there and then cover it up. Or you could turn around, put the noodles in there, put the water and stick it in the microwave. It's quicker that way. But when you, if you do it the other way, where you heat the water up, put them in there, you let them swell, you get full quicker. So we gonna do it the way when you heat the water up, put the noodles in there, turn around, take it out, they swell up, and now you want to drain a little bit of water out of it, not a lot. Put the season in there. Then you want to chop your pickles up. You want to turn and get your Cheetos, crumble them up, pull them in there, chop your summer sausage up. After you cook that, put that in there, put a little mayonnaise in there, and then you pour some of the pickle Hold juice on, in mayonnaise? there. Hold yeah. on, yeah. mayonnaise? Yeah. In noodles? Yeah. Mayonnaise, yeah. yeah. And I keep mix going, it up. Yeah, keep going, keep going. That's it. Just divide it up. Yeah. And what's y'all dessert? I, I just seen them make some dessert out here. So I'm allergic to peanuts and peanut butter and stuff like that. But in there, they used to do a doo -wop. Basically, you get um, you get a honey bun, you get like a uh, Snickers or something like that, and then you melt it and you put it on top of the honey bun, and y'all eat it like that. 
Or you just get the honey bun, you put the um, peanut butter on it, and then y'all eat it like that. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. But I just ate regular shit, like candy bar. <laughs> shit, yeah. Like, like yeah. Regular shit. Yeah, give me that on straight. Anybody, anybody ever try to uh, take your take your your commissary? Nah, hell no, nah. nah. hell no. Nah. Shit, you got to kill me. Yeah. <laughs> but um, and it ain't like that. Like how people like that yeah. move and shit. That yeah. probably happened like in uh, like other so state in, in Mississippi. Ain't like in that. In the county, yeah. in the county, it was different because in the county you had to you had to go to court. So they running your bag while you're in court. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Then you come back and nigga, what the nigga gotta respect you too though, cause you if you, respect you yeah, cause. <laughs> In my city, where I'm from, shit, the people who knew me, they know I'll get down. So, mm-hmm. you got two charges. You can come steal there, and you got to have that problem come there. Or just let me be. Like, leave mm-hmm. me alone. So, people know I get down. So, a lot of people didn't just try me like that. Yeah. So, nah, hell nah. And then when you affiliated in the pen, nah, them boys ain't finna let that happen to you and stuff like that. And then your brothers ain't going to take advantage of They're going to try to extort you. Like try to talk you out of some shit, but that as far as just like taking it, little boy in you, nah, because yeah, yeah. you got you you got rules and regulation that you got to abide by. Because shit, you take something and then you go to the house man, tell the house man, now you got to go in the crack and get violated. So, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, can I be real? Hey, yeah. you got your vibe on, bro. Yeah, yeah. So now, so we'll now, man. Hey, hey, we we appreciate you, man. Before we get off I here, like man, it, man. We appreciate you sitting down with us, man. We yeah, I wish we had you. another hour yeah, here. Yeah, no, hey, no, look, we, we bring bringing you back, back yeah, bro. No, we, we bring, bring you back. back. Sure. Yeah, we bring yeah, you yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, we gotta yeah, get yeah. some more stories. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's a lot of stuff we didn't get get on here. You know what I'm saying? People gonna be hitting us up in the comments like, "Hey, bro, he said something about this real estate that three hundred dollars." I was going to the strip club, but now, yeah, that's what we didn't get. We don't say that. Yeah. Thing is, we don't want to leave nothing off the table. We don't want over, yeah. but we don't want to leave nothing on the table. It's yeah. who you are. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. I want to give us uh, some of that. You know what I mean about the real estate. Buy a house right now, man. Don't people like to talk about the interest rates and stuff like that? But you don't want to fall victim to the interest rate thing because think about right now. Texas has over thirty different amenities coming here. Did y'all know that? No, I did. So you got Universal Studios coming. Here. Everybody know about that. Yeah. yeah. But you also got one of the biggest resorts coming here off in Rockwall. Not only that, you have Tiger Woods Golf and Putting Course coming here. Yeah, Dre's Nightclub is coming here. Mm-hmm. I've seen that. Oh, the one from, from Vegas, right? From Vegas. Yeah. 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 Yep, you got that coming here. They got a, a, um, a light-up playground that's going to be open at night. That's coming mm-hmm. here. You have um, the cool. Amtrak train that's coming from Houston coming this way. Yeah. Yeah. It's, that's yeah. coming here. You got, you know how Top Golf? Mm-hmm. They have one for soccer coming up here. They got one for, they got one for basketball That's, too. I ain't seen that one. So think about that. You have an adult skating ring coming here. You have the PGAs coming here. Yeah. The Texas Rangers gonna host the World Series. Yeah. What else? Um, yeah, what's up? You got a lot of shit. Damn. So think about it. You buy a property right now for $300,000. Fool, in the next five years, that property gonna be worth some bread. So imagine you buy this house at three hundred thousand at a seven percent interest rate. Say you got a three thousand dollar month payment, and that's why relationship and, and whether people know or not, that's why relationships are so important. Because now you have a, a dual household. You have if if y'all get this house and your wife is contributing fifteen hundred, you contributing fifteen hundred, you can get the house that you want. A, ain't too many single people can handle a three thousand dollar month mortgage. Mm-hmm. So that's why relationships are important. So if you if you like this woman and you can see yourself with that woman a long time, get that woman, marry that woman, lock that woman down, and y'all go buy your house because now you're building generational wealth. But you know, they so, say, not to cut y'all, but you know, they say that's going 50-50. That's it. I believe in 50-50. I don't, I don't care what the case may be. We fit. D bills are out. He ain't mine. D bills are out. He said D bills are out. Yeah. Yeah. No, bro, and, I can't. And, but I also believe that her money is her money. My money is my money. Yeah. You know, so I'm not looking for you to contribute nothing other than what we con- we have together. Yeah. You know, yeah, if you yeah. choose to go out and get that G wag and that payment two thousand dollars, shit, that's your G wag. You yeah, drive that yeah, in there. That's yeah. yours. I ain't. I'm not doing it. Yeah. And the women who who are like that, they just looking for they just looking for a nigga to take care of. Them. They lazy. A real woman who who got her money, who on her shit, she's looking for fifty fifty. And I believe when I get married, I'm getting a prenup anyway. You get a prenup? Most definitely. What what uh, T I say? 
Indubitably. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Yeah, but so. What make you want to get pre-dog? Because what they What's have. yours and yours? What mine's and mine? But but it's supposed to be. You know what I'm saying? She supposed to know that off the off the muscle though. Uh, then she gonna know it. You say with that paperwork. Yeah, off top. Off top. Pre-dog. Yeah. And it, and it, and, it, and, it, and a lot of time it ain't just for you. I, you just letting a woman know, especially a woman like my girl. Make if I tell you how much money she, make, I don't like to do it because. She hate when I do that. Yeah. She make way more money than me. So I be a fuck nigga if we get married, divorce, and I'm asking for money. Yeah. Yeah. That ain't no man shit. Look, you leave with what you came with. I leave with what I came with. Was yours or yours with mine's and mine? We gone by a business. Yeah. That's it. The house that we got, let's bust it down the middle. In it. Let's, that's it. You going by your bill. It's easy that way versus you got niggas like, nah, you got to pay me this. You got to pay me that, man. Fuck no. No. Let's sign this paper. You go your way. I go my way. Don't put me on child support. I ain't going to put you on child support. But is that, Holly is Berry got to pay child support right now. Is it like a way of like damn near premeditating like a split up though? No. Only women who assume that are women who looking for a come up. A woman who got her shit together, she saying, bet. Let's do it because I don't want you trying to take my shit either. She got something to lose too. She got something to lose. The people yeah. who ain't got nothing to lose, the one who getting in their feelings. Oh, hey, yeah, uh, nah, nah, yeah. you already yeah. you trying to no, and then you just look at it. What does she got? Nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing. You have a you have a job paying you hourly. You have this Altima, and you got bills. You got bad credit. Ain't got an Altima. You in trouble? <laughs> <laughs> But let's let fit it with the real estate. So you buy a house for three hundred thousand, seven percent interest rate. Three, just hypothetical. These fake numbers. Now you're paying three thousand dollars a month. All right. When the interest rates do go down, you turn around and you refinance your house. Jeez. Pull some equity out your house. Just say hypothetically, if you refinance your house and you pull equity out, you pull out forty thousand dollars, and it made your now your interest rate instead of a seven percent, you had a five percent. You pull forty thousand dollars of equity out your house, and your monthly payment is twenty five hundred dollars. Now you turn around and you take that forty thousand dollars, you and your old lady. If y'all married and y'all share different last names, you tell her to go. Because if you married and y'all got different last names, you can get eight properties in, in your name. Your wife can get eight in her name. Now you got sixteen mm -hmm. properties y'all got. Imagine if those sixteen properties are producing a thousand dollars a month in passive income. That's sixteen thousand dollars a month, yeah. and then y'all got these houses. Mm -hmm. The equity is steady. The value of these houses is steady going up, and you paying your mortgage every single month. Mm -hmm. And when you get big lumps of money, you turn around and you turn around and go pay it towards the house that has the least balance. You want to try to pay the houses off too. You want to try to finesse it to where you paying the house out too. But just imagine you do that route that I just said, and you still got this house. You got a low monthly payment. You, you got a low mortgage, you got a low interest rate, and you just pull forward it out. You turn around and go buy another property that's 100 miles, within a 100-mile radius of the property that you got now. And then you turn around you rent that property out for, you ain't got to bust nobody here. Just say you rent out for $1,600 to $2,600 a month, mm -hmm. where you only just get $100 off it. But it's paying, keeping them. It paying the mortgage on this one. Which growing in equity. Growing in equity. Now you got another house you finna rinse and repeat, and you finna do the same thing over and over again. Oh. So what, what got you into real estate? Because the last time, like I said, you was rapping, clothing company. Mm, car sale. Car sale. Yep. So with real estate, my granddaddy did real estate. A lot of people I know did real estate. So I like, man, I want to do it. And somebody told me I couldn't do it. And I like, I'm finna see so I can prove this motherfucker wrong. And I ain't up getting my real estate license as a feeling. Because they're like, man, you a feeling, man. You can't get your real estate license. You can't do You can't do this. And I just went through the whole process. You know, getting my license. I did it. And already, like, I'm at, what, seven houses already? Dang. And I just have, I just got my license in January. Oh, no, that's what's up. So. Hey, you grinding. Getting to it, man. For real. Getting to it. I want it. I want it better yeah. than most folks. Like, yeah. a lot of people look at real estate like a hustle. Like, Oh, I'm finna get my real estate license. I'm finna sell these houses. I'm finna be rich. Hell no. Nah. Yeah. So, so what's what the truth, bro? You was for you to get your license, or you know what I mean, for, for you to go through the process of getting your. A person who don't like tests, hell yeah. Like 
I ain't never really been like a fan of school. Like I'm smart, I read a lot, I got knowledge out the ass, but taking a test, that ain't never been my style. And so I got my, I, when I took my test, I flunked the first time, but I came back the next week when I like buckled down, like, okay, I know what's on here, I'm finna go on and study. So I, I hit the books, next week I got my license. But if you ain't really into tests, it gonna be kinda hard, but you don't really need a license to do real estate. You can go find, like your partner who was just here, he, he said he was a bird dog. He went and found deals. Just imagine if he, them deals he went and found, he had to turn around and got them on a contract and then got them himself. You don't need them but like a 700, a 600, 620 credit score to get your first property. Mm -hmm. I got a property right now in Kaufman, Texas. It's $250,000. It's 10 acres of land. $250,000 mm -hmm. ain't shit. Mm -hmm. 10 acres of land. God damn. You don't need them but a 620 credit score. And you don't need them but 3% down. Mm -hmm. What's 3% of 250000 Yeah. Now you got 10 acres of land and it got a house on there. You got to do the just little renovation. And you got 10 acres of land. Do y'all know how big 10 acres of land yeah, is? Real. Hey, hey, you, you, can throw, you can throw your pun on there. You can, it got you them can on throw. there. It got three mm -hmm. on there right now. Ready for livestock. Ready for it. Throw your, throw your goat on there on yep. cow, cow. You pay no taxes. Yeah, yeah. You get discounts. Yep. Yep. That's what's up. Yeah. And then just imagine if you do get goats, you could turn around and sell goats to these people in California who do goat yoga. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Money yeah, out here, man. There's money out there for sure, especially in that real estate God, for sure. I'm telling you, dog, sure. it's, deal, it's deals out here, and, and it's us who not getting it mm -hmm. because the white people getting it. Let me ask you this, man. So when I was, I'm 38 now. When I was 25, Damn. I bought my house. Mm hmm. <laughs> I bought my house when I was 25, right? That's two years from 40. And at the time, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm bad. Oh, you give me here, bro. You know how these kids do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> but when I was 25, I bought a house, right? Yep. And uh, at the time, it was like I, I was like working part time. You know what I'm saying? I was married or whatever. Um, and we, you know, we was putting our income together, but we didn't make the the income to get the 200 and 300 thousand dollar houses, right? So. At the time, we bought a home. Uh, it was a foreclosed home, it was a short sale. Yep. And at first, in my mind, I'm like, dang, man, like I'm getting something that somebody just like rushing up out to get in. But I, like the house at the time was worth like 140. We paid 80 for it. Now that mother worth 320. Mm -hmm. So you hearing you say that like, y'all still got now? Yeah, we still got now. I still uh, live yeah. to this day. Ah, uh, yeah. I still live in it to it this day. It should be paid off. It's finna be paid off. Oh, yeah, Lord have mercy. Off. You another, didn't another, be rich. In another, <laughs> in another five years, it'll be paid off. Yeah, that nigga yeah, rich. It'll be paid off in another five years. So my, my He can't never come in and say he broke, y'all. <laughs> yeah, 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 my yeah, question yeah. for you is, bro, uh, how do we get our community to, like, not saying I did it the right way, you know what I'm saying, but I did it in a patient you did way. It, you did it in the right way. To, to where I was like, getting it something at the highest value for the lowest price. Like from your standpoint of doing real estate, you know, in our community too, like what is it that that drives us to go and get the three, four hundred thousand dollar house when we can get the short sale, the foreclosure, the liens on them for a lower price and, you know, like put a little money into it, a little work into it, but in five, ten years, you in a, a whole nother situation. Like um, cause it might, cause when I was buying my house, we had friends and families that was buying, they was going to get the three, 400,000 yeah. big joints. You know what I'm saying? And we kept it simple. But now 10 years later, we in a better situation. Some of them don't even have them houses no more. Okay. Then. But it was like the mindset at the time, everybody was like, you know what I mean? Like it's the, it's, it's the, it's kind of like, I don't know who got us. In this place, this this space that we in, but it's just we always trying to one up the next person. We always yeah. trying to show out. We always trying to look better. And it took me for a long. It took me a while to like finally get that shit because I wanted the Gucci. I, I bought Gucci every week when I got paid. Yeah. Like I'm a fan of Gucci, the brand, the clothes, everything. But I used to go out of my way to get Gucci, get designer shit, Balenciaga shit. Like mm -hmm. I got so much Balenciaga shit, it's a shame. Mm -hmm. But just if I and I did the math the other day. If I sold all that Gucci and Balenciaga shit that's in my closet, don't you know I could turn around and go get a foreclosed property? Mm -hmm. Over $90,000 worth of dumb shit mm -hmm. in my closet. Rolex watch. What the fuck I need with that for when I wear this Apple watch every single day? Mm -hmm. So just imagine me taking that money 
and investing in some versus trying to look good to impress somebody. Mm -hmm. Crazy man, and and, and I never understood it because my girl make all that money, do all of what she do, and never owned a Louis Vuitton bag. Mm -hmm. I bought a first Louis Vuitton bag, mm -hmm. and don't you know when I bought the bag, I didn't buy it for her. I bought it because I wanted to, and they wanted to be like, yeah, yeah, I bought yeah, you that little time, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What we been doing for, though? Yep. And you know what's so crazy? That woman said, you bought that for you, not me. Mm -hmm. I don't give a damn about it. I'm cool with the Michael Kors and Coach. Mm -hmm. Why would I spend two, two three thousand dollars on a bag that I'm yeah. rarely going to wear? That's real. So you and your wife did it the right way because only thing I, I can say that y'all didn't do I would I go find me another foreclosed property yeah, yeah, yeah. or another house, and I rent that house out, and I'll be in another house. Yo, that's the that's plan it. now. That's the plan. Do y'all got the same last name? Yeah, yeah, we got the same last name. Even then, now. shit, y'all still get yeah, eight. We can get eight. You know what I'm saying? Hey, what you say? I'm paid in full. We ain't got no money over here. Yeah, bitch. I ain't got no money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, thing. But you, nah. you just gotta. We just we just gotta do a better job of stop trying to impress folk, yeah. man. When we when we get that out of our mouth. Get that taste out of our mouth or trying to impress folk. We're gonna be all right. We're gonna be all right. Not I don't even think I don't think sometimes it's impression. I think going so long and we feel like we go without, it's like, well, damn, the first chance I get to get mm -hmm. it, I'm gonna do it. But then I, I did that when I was when I was doing when I was making all that money off of just social media, I'm like, man, everything I feel like I didn't have, I'm get going it. to get yeah. it. And I said the same thing, and I call my brother right now. He used to be like, that's the dumbest shit in the world. And it is <laughs> that that, be like, that but the now when you, when you grow out of you look back like, man. Man, that was the dumbest shit I ever did in my life. But in that moment, you like, and it's I cool. Didn't have it, and not, I'm going to get it. And it's not, it. yeah. and it's nothing bad. It's nothing wrong with getting nice shit, but do it in moderation. Mm -hmm. That's the word niggas need to embed in their brain. Moderation. Do it within your means. Mm -hmm. I learned that from Big Poker. He said, "Do it." He said, "It's cool. Just do it in moderation." No, no, and I'm real. like, "Damn, that's true. You can still go get that Gucci shit, but." Don't go out your way or put yourself in a bind mm -hmm. to get that shit. Yeah. That's it. That's it. And real estate, where is it, man? I'm telling you, if you listen to this, man, go get you a piece of property, man. You need a realtor who go educate you, hit me up. But if you and, and that's another thing, like I'm 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 like the real I'm like the the realtor that I'm I'm the I'm the real today. Go keep it real with you. Yeah, you put the real in real estate. Yes, yeah, I do that. Yeah, I ain't the one who doing this just to sell something, mm -hmm. giving bad information. Mm -hmm. I don't give a fuck how pretty that house is. If something wrong with it, we ain't getting it. Mm -hmm. I ain't showing it to you. If they ain't trying to negotiate with the price, we ain't doing it. Mm -hmm. Cause I want you to be in the equity position, getting this house. Yeah. When the appraiser come back at three hundred thousand, and we got them all for two fifty. We celebrate. Mm -hmm. We own it for two fifty. The appraiser is three hundred. Yeah, we yeah. got fifty thousand dollars in equity mm -hmm. in the house already before we even put some money down. Mm -hmm. We winning, yep. and it's it's always my word is out. We winning because we win together. I treat all my clients like family. And one thing I don't play about, and people who know me, I don't play by my folk. Nah, for sure. well, get on your ass so fast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so let me ask you this though, because you know a lot of people. Ask me, bro. Yeah, but I'm talking about like in general. He's talking about ask me. Bro. Ask me, bro. Yeah. <laughs> ask me, bro. Like, what is uh, like, what what it look like? The percentage, you know what I mean? Like, like the check, or how how do it come? Do it come broke down? You nah. know what I'm saying? Like, or you like when they close and when they bank and get that money. It depends on what broker you with. Yeah. I think I got the best broker in the world, and I ain't gonna give too much of my broker business, but I've been with brokers who want big percentages of your money, 70, 30, 80, 20. Seen that. My broker the truth. And I got all the resources that these big brokers have, and they ain't trying to take my money. And that's that is, and that's what I love about them because they're not trying to take my money. We want you to be successful. We don't want all your money. Pay us this. We good. Yeah. And we're gonna support you throughout everything. So I'm saying y'all get like a percentage on the yeah. scale. Like so, so if I wanna go to so I'm asking, just say that if it's somebody listening, they wanna go to real estate school. Okay. They've been sold 
you know, so much of what we buy and what we are told because we're not getting everything directly from the person. We're getting things from the internet. We're getting things yeah. from people that's always trying to sell mm-hmm. us something. You know what I'm saying? So if I'm somebody, I say, man, you know, I want to go TikTok to school. TikTok hustles. Oh, man, yeah. I hate that. Yeah, yeah. TikTok hustles. Go, like, oh, am I going to get 2% off a of sale? I'm going to get 5%. It depends. It depends. It depends. So standard is 3%. Yeah. But then you have certain properties and certain sellers, they only gonna pay two point five or two percent. Yeah. If you go buy a Lenar home, it's one percent. So if you call me and you say, Hey, Devars, I wanna go buy this house, you're not paying me nothing. The seller is paying me. Yeah. If you got a house that you want me to sell, then you paying me. And me and you gotta negotiate what percentage that is. Me personally, it just gotta make sense. I'm down for almost any percentage, it just gotta make sense. How much work am I doing? If I'm on my if I'm on my Devaris bail bag, I need my three percent because I know what I'm gonna do to help sell this property. I know what I'm gonna do when it help when it come down to me trying to help get you a good deal on this property. You know what I'm saying? But then if it's something quick, something fast, you know I take a one percent. I took a one percent before. You know what I'm saying? It just depends on the situation. So let me ask you this real quick. <clears throat> this is me being real. Have you ever sold a house? And like, man, that's because <laughs> nah. no. I won't sell it. Mm-hmm. Even with cars, even when I was in the car business, if it was a bad car deal, 18% interest rate, they want you to put $10,000 down and you still got an eight, $800 payment, mm-hmm. I'm not selling that car. It's like one, what made me a good dope dealer is I always gave the smokers the deal. Mm-hmm. When, they was, when I was selling cocaine, everybody was selling a gram for a, a half of a gram for $30. I hit the town I was selling the whole gram for 30. Well, you, you and, the bag, and the bag, <laughs> and the schnock bag was better. Mm-hmm. When it came down to the weed, I had the rapper weed. Everybody was selling zilts for five, six hundred dollars. I hit the town I was selling them for 350. And it's sour diesel, and it's Oh, yeah, White Widow. And it's the rapper weed. They call yeah. police on you. That's yeah, why you went to jail. They call police on you. Yeah, hey, yeah. Yeah. And my partner. My partner. It hey, was you, bro. My partner sent it to the pen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He yeah. come in and try to do yeah. all that. Yeah, they going to get the And it's the same like, way in the car business. Because you got to think about it. Why would I want to sell you one time when I can sell you a hundred times? That's consistent business. When it come down to selling cars and selling houses, I don't want to sell you just one. So I'm gonna get you a good deal. I'm gonna do it right, so I can sell you five, ten. Referral business. That's how you become successful. When you got people who singing your praises out there, people sing my praises. It don't get heard because it get blinded by the people who give Gucci bags mm-hmm. and they posting it me and all the houses and shit like that. But them ain't realistically, realistically, people can't afford no me and all the house, nah, especially good. not with the climate being the way it is now. Nah. Mm-hmm. And people are scared to go buy a $300,000 house, $400,000 house, mm-hmm. even a $250,000 house. Mm-hmm. That's real. When the whole time we live in Dallas, dog, this is prime real estate. Yeah. We're we going to have the biggest metroplex in the United States of America by t- 2500 By 2050, they said that the, the uh, Frisco, Allen, is gonna, they wanted to look like Manhattan. They mm-hmm. building up. So it's gonna be different, why are man. we bullshitting? Yeah, yeah. I just sold a, a property to a, so two 23-year-olds. They love each other. They bought their first property. I asked them, I said, what are y'all goals? And you know what they said? They said, our goal is to get five properties. 23 years yeah, old, man. They already on. In 2008, I was at Mississippi State campus chasing women, selling weed on campus, and selling fake crack. In 2008, don't y'all know the, the world crashed in 2008? Yep. Stock market crashed? Yep. Don't you know I could have turned around and took my little six, seven hundred credit score because I was 18, 19, new credit. I could have turned around and went and bought a property. And at that time, 2008, that shit probably going $80,000, $90,000, $100,000. Didn't know it. Yeah. It's a lack of knowledge, man. But once you know it, can't nobody take it. Oh, you know my God. Saying? It's, it's, it, can't nobody take it, man. If you don't own no property right now, go get you some property, man, even if it's just, you know, investment. I'm selling a condo right now in Dallas. Bought it for 80 Get how much it worth right now? At least 270 300 140 140 
Yeah. Oh, you said a condo. Yeah. 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 One that's, four. That's, it would come up though. Go yeah, get you some, man. Get that's you real. something. Like something. It's gonna the value with real estate. Real estate do not stay still. It's not mm-hmm. like it, it's not. That's the most. It, right now, it's the safest way to make money to invest your money. Mm-hmm. If you hit a if you hit the lotto right now and they gave you a million dollars. You can either take that million dollars, go buy all this depreciating shit, or you could take that million dollars, and it, this, well, this is what people say. They'll take a million dollars and go invest it in stocks. You're going to lose in stocks. Mm-hmm. Some people say, I'm going to take my million dollars and let it go sit in the bank. All right, you take that million dollars, you sit it in the bank for five years, it's going to draw 0.000018% interest. Mm-hmm. When you could turn around and invest this million dollars in real estate, and in the next two years, that million dollars that you got, now it's potentially a hundred, uh, one point five million. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying, or one point seven, or two, two million, mm-hmm. because now you're investing in real estate. Real estate is always going up. You had them little periods where they're like this, but you know what they're doing? They're steady going up, yep. Yep. steady going up. Yep. So that's what they get lost in the, the little intricate, the little, yep. the little <laughs> deals. But it's like if you look at the bigger picture, it's doing this the whole oh, time. Man. It's going up the whole time, man. Sure. Whole time, man. Yeah, Listen, man. man. Hey, man, you ain't came bless us with a uh, yeah. million trillion dollars worth, man. I'm yeah. talking about from the clothes game, to, to the to the to the real estate, man. To even just on life, man. You know, again, we appreciate you for coming through, sure. sitting on the couch with us, oh, man. For sure. We, we gonna bring, definitely we gonna bring you back we on, on too, bro. Back on here, bro. For real. Yeah, for yeah, sure, man. For sure, know. man. So, Anytime. hey, man. So you about to close us out, man? Like I said, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, I got confused by all these cameras in here. It's like 10 of them. <laughs> but if you can look at, focus in on that middle one, the Sony boy, right there. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't going to say the big one, pause. pause. But yeah. <laughs> if you can look at that one, man, and if you can close us out with any information you want to give, anything you want to leave the audience, man, this man, your Man, follow me on social media at Devars Bell, D A V A R U S B E L L. Um, if you, you want to support me, you know, if you want looking for a good reel to hit me up. But I just want to leave y'all with one thing, man. Keep going, keep growing. That's it. Keep going, keep growing. That's it. That's it. Man, we'll take that for sure. Yeah, keep going, keep growing. Can I be real, man? We appreciate you for yeah. rocking with us once again, helping us to avoid the bullshit in the world. Yeah. And we'll catch you on the next one. Bow, bow, bang. Yeah. We appreciate you, man. Yeah, for sure. I don't need a shoulder to lean on. Be real. All these niggas be lame, all these bitches the same